right across the house. There was despair, dismay, a sort of serious concern for where this leaves Britain's global reputation, where it leaves those Afghans, uh, and what future for us when there are autocrats and authoritarian regimes all over the world who will be encouraged by this absence of Western policy. We are the sixth richest economy in the world. We are chairing the G7. We are a key anchor and player in NATO. We are close to our European partners and we have the key transatlantic relationship with the United States. You've got to ask, did Boris Johnson and Dominic Raab match the occasion? Did they come to Parliament with a seriousness and an authority that left their colleagues quiet and listening keenly on their every word? The answer is, of course they didn't. That Boris Johnson, the arch clown, appeared like an emperor who had no clothes. And suddenly in the House of Commons, uh, it was visible to all that his bluster, uh, his clown-like behaviour, his filibustering didn't work and couldn't work on this occasion. And Dominic Raab heckling others from the front bench on a sun lounger in Crete when officials are advising him and recommending that he call the Afghan foreign minister Hanif Atmar. And what's he say to them? He's, he says he's unavailable, is what he says. So there's a key question today. Why was a holiday more important than saving lives in Afghanistan? And let me say to you very, very clearly, uh, you know, I have flown back from holiday, run back from holiday. I ran back from holiday uh, at the outbreak of the 2011 riots. I ran back from holiday when a young woman was murdered in my constituency. I was in South Africa. Four hours later, I was back on a plane. There are many occasions on which parliamentarians get back on a plane. And by the way, you may not know this, uh, uh, but you can use taxpayers' money to get back if you need to. And Dominic Raab could have got back if he needed to, but he didn't think it was important enough. Why? Because there's an entitlement. There's an entitlement that runs through these guys. They, it's a born to rule. I'd be back instantly because I don't feel entitled. I feel privileged. I'd feel privileged to do the job. It was pathetic. And we had these outstanding speeches from Tom Tugendhat, from Theresa May, Tobias Elwood and others on his own side, questioning what they had done and the decision making that they had made. What happened to the intelligence? What did it tell us? What assessment was made of that intelligence? We don't know. The need for an inquiry. After 20 years, why are we in this position? And again, brushed off. Of course we need an inquiry. Outstanding speeches, I thought, from Keir Starmer. Challenging them. Exacting in every single word that came out of his mouth. And Lisa Nandy. Passion and rage on behalf of those Afghan people. And of course, 5,000 people this year does not meet the scale of the challenge that faces us. How can it possibly when you watch those scenes uh, in front of us? So he was assailed. They were both assailed on every single side um, of the house. Real concern now at where this leads Britain. What does global Britain mean? It, 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 was, it was drawn up on the back of a fag paper, it would appear, and it means very little. Isolated in Europe, 
unable to influence the United States and unable to have a plan. It wasn't even clear that Boris was on the phone to the head of NATO. He couldn't say when, when he was asked by Theresa May. You should be on the phone to Angela Merkel, Macron. What plan can we put together now? No plan. No plan. We're all acting unilaterally. Now we're scrambling around, notwithstanding the position of the United States. And when he said, when he said um, that uh, he, we could not have foreseen what was going to happen and that Britain was prepared for the fall of Kabul. Was it? We were prepared for the fall? How prepared could we have been? If that was preparation, my God, I'd hate to see what being unprepared looked like and that we could not have foreseen. Well, th well the timetable, the withdrawal timetable uh, has been in place since February 2020. What do you mean we could not have foreseen? None of this made any sense at all. Boris looked painfully, painfully unequal to the seriousness that was required on this occasion. Platitudes, sound bites, rhetoric. It was pathetic. Utterly, utterly I take no pleasure in that. No pleasure in that. And the reason I take no pleasure in that is because men and women lost their lives in our armed services. And this ought to be occasion where we're able to rally around.